Welcome back to the Jongus Games playthrough for the Castles of Tuscany. At this point, we have played through one third of the game in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, then you can find a link for it down below in the description, or you can click the eye up there in the top corner. Now, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I play through the rest of the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. All right, let's now jump back into the game. At this point in the game, we have just completed the first out of three scorings, and it is now our turn, so let's go ahead and take it. Currently, we have an in tile in our reserve and no in cards, but we do have two workers, so I think let's go ahead and play this to keep things going. Of course, each worker counts as a wild card, so that will pay for the two in cards we'd need, and then we can place this right over here, which is adjacent to a previously placed spot. Now, that is a single enclosed region, so that's going to give us one green point which will bring us up to eight. And since we only have two more scorings left in the game, that means that one point we got will end up being worth two red points once the game is over. Next up, that inn is going to give us a wild tile. And then we can tell that all of our blue inn spots have been covered up within our overall territory. Now we are the first player to do that. So that means we are going to get these two green points, which will bring us up to 10. And then the next player to cover up all of their blue inns will get one green point. Well, our turn is done, so that means blue can go, and considering they have no tiles in reserve or cards in their hand, they are going to spend their turn drawing cards to figure out what tiles they want to reserve in future turns. So they simply draw two cards into their hand, and that finishes their turn, which means yellow can now go. It appears they want to play this city. That's going to go right over here, and they are not going to pay any cards, which means they do have to spend two of these workers. Now that did complete a size one region, so they'll get one green point. And then they can take the city action, which gives them an upgrade, and they would like to take the card draw upgrade right over there. All right, yellow is now done, which means we can once again go. Now we could place this out either onto an agriculture spot or a quarry spot, considering we have those cards in our hand. And while the agriculture is good, uh, that does give us green points, I think the quarry is better. Uh, now it's worth noting, when you place these out as agriculture, it's always worth plus one type of agriculture type, even though technically it is not any of them. So that means if your other tiles work out right, you can actually get five different types of agriculture with the wild blue hex. I don't think that makes sense for us right now. Instead, I think getting a marble is going to be good to get an extra action. And let's go ahead and place this over here in order to turn this into a quarry. That is going to cost us two of our quarry cards. And that did not complete a region. And then we will get just one marble because we don't have any other marble upgrades. So this will go right over here. And then I think we should spend it. Now we have a safe route or a daring route that we can take. The safe route is we could just draw three more cards to increase our options, or the daring route is we could take this castle. Now we can tell that both of our opponents are in a position where they could place a castle, and if we took this, then that would potentially be our final castle, and if we place that before our opponents, that would give us more of these green points, and of course the castle activation lets us put more of the hexes down from the market. That all seems great, but we don't currently have any workers and we don't have any castle cards in our hand, so it's possible we might not find the right cards. I think playing risky is still the fun way to go though, so let's go ahead and take this, which denies that option from our opponents. In the future turns, we are going to draw cards and hopefully we will find castle cards. If not, it's likely we'll find enough doubles to make it work anyway. All right, after that, we have to reveal another tile and it is a wagon. And that's the fourth wagon currently in the market. If a fifth wagon shows up, then all of them will be removed and we will draw five more tiles from the neutral stacks. And that certainly might happen. So far, people haven't really been going after the wagons just yet. All right, our turn is done, which means the blue player can go. And they first have to check their cards. With these in mind, they've decided to spend their turn reserving and they are going to go with this in. That will go over there. They can then flip over a card and it's a monastery. And that's finished their turn. This means yellow can go and they have decided they are simply going to draw three cards. They have one card in their hand, and that's not enough for them to know what type of tile they want to reserve, so they'll likely reserve a tile on their next turn. Speaking of drawing cards, it's now our turn, and I think let's draw three cards. We are, of course, hoping to hit multiple of the castle cards, but even just a duplicate quarry or city card would be great. Now that is a village, that is a wagon, and that is a quarry, so we got one of the things that we wanted. It might not be great spending four of these cards to play this out, so it's possible we'll draw again on our next turn. We'll just have to see how we're feeling once that happens. All right, our turn is now done, which means blue can go, and they also want to draw cards. 
Now they are only going to take two, so those will go into their hand, and that's finished their turn. This means yellow is up, and it looks like they also want to draw cards. Currently, it seems like that's what everyone is doing. Now yellow does get to draw three cards into their hand, and that's completed their turn, so we get to go. Well, our opponent's turns were pretty fast there, and at this point, I think let's not spend four cards. Let's go ahead and draw some more. I'd like to hit at least one of the castle cards potentially, and the game is not far along enough yet that I'm worried about ending with cards in our hand. Of course, every three cards that we have at the end of the game is also worth a point, which is certainly not bad. So let's draw three cards. This is an inn, which is actually useless for us because we placed all of our inns. The next one is a monastery card, and the third one is a castle. Okay, great. That worked out well. I think on the next turn, we will likely play this as well as another pair to get this played out. Our turn is done, so blue can go, and they are going to keep building up. They're going to draw two more cards into their hand, which finishes their turn, and now yellow can take theirs. Now, they have decided to reserve something, but they have to consider the card they have in their hand. And after taking these into account, they want to take one of these wagon tiles. That's going to go into their reserve, and then they can refill the market with a new tile, and that is going to be another wagon. All right, it's now our turn, and let's definitely play this castle. Now we are going to spend this card along with a pair. Currently our pairs are two agriculture or two of the quarries. Now another quarry placed right over here would complete this region, whereas we have not really worked towards agriculture at all at this point. Currently, neither of those are showing up in the market, so I think let's just get rid of these agriculture cards. Maybe that's just not part of the game we're really going to be focusing on, and that way we have paid for this castle. Now, that's going to get placed right over here, and of course, that is a size 1 region that was completed, so that will give us one green point. This will bring us up to 11, and then that was also our final castle spot being covered up, so we can achieve this, which will give us two more green points, which means we are tied with the blue player at 13. This can then flip over. And then we can activate the castle, which lets us take any of these tiles and place it immediately. In this case, I think that while the monasteries are good, getting us cards, and the wagons are nice because they get us random yield bonuses, the best thing for us right now is probably to take this village, because we can place it right over here. Now that has completed another size 1 region, so we get 1 green point, which will bring us up to 15. And then when we activate it, we will get 2 workers, so we can add those into our supply. All right, I think that was an excellent turn all around, and now we have a couple workers which will help us out with uh, being able to place the tiles down that might not match with the cards in our hand. Uh, speaking of these tiles, we do have to refill the market. The next one is another monastery. It looks like right now in the market there are just two options total. It's now time for blue to go, and they are going to use their second reserve spot to take a tile. In this case, they're going to take one of these monasteries and then they can reveal this tile, which is another monastery. Wow, we're seeing a lot of those right now. That's finished their turn, which means it's time for the yellow player to go. And they have decided to play two wagon cards in order to play this out. Now they are going to put this right over there, which means they did not complete a region. That is a size two region total. And they will now get to take the effect, which is going to give them the benefits on two yield cards. So they can draw those from the top of the deck. This first one is going to give them a wild hex. And the second one lets them draw two cards. So they can place these into their area, and that's finished their turn. This means we can go, and I think we should reserve. At the moment, we can reserve a wagon or a monastery, and both seem good. We do have a bunch of cards in our hand already, though, so I think maybe let's go for a wagon to get one of those random yield benefits when we play it out. So we can place this right over here, and then we can refill that spot in the market, and this is an agriculture tile with two different types printed on it. Our turn is done, so blue can go. And if they have decided to play three cards from their hand in order to place this monastery out. The only monastery spot they can legally go is right over here. That is a size one region completed, so that will give them one green point. And that means they're tied with us at 14. After that, they get the monastery benefit of drawing three cards from the top of the deck, which is certainly pretty nice for them considering how few cards they had at the start of this second scoring round of the game. All right, they are done, so yellow can go. And it looks like they want to place this wild token down onto their territory. After considering the options, they are going to play three cards. One is a castle, and two are inns, so that means that these are going to count as a castle card, and that means they can place this right over here as a castle. Now that is a size one region, so they get one green point, and that will bring them up to eight. And then they can activate the castle bonus, which lets them place a tile from the market directly into their territory. Currently, there are three different types of tiles they could grab, and they've decided to go with a wagon tile. 
They're going to place this over here, which has completed a size 2 region. So that will give them 3 green points, which will bring them up to 11. And then they can once again draw 2 yield cards and take the bonuses printed on them. Well, the first card is going to give them a marble. And then the second card will give them 1 green point. That point will bring them up to 12. And at this point, there is an empty spot on the market. So they have to refill it with a new tile. And that is a quarry. That'll go over here, and at this point, Yellow decides they would like to spend the marble they just picked up from that yield card in order to take another action, and this one is going to be taking a tile. In this case, they would like the quarry they just placed out here. So that will go into the reserve, and they can take another tile from the top of their stack, and this is a single agriculture type tile. Looks like there are some pigs running around there. All right, that has finished a pretty big turn for the Yellow player. This means it's our turn, and I think let's place our first wagon of the game. Now we can spend one wagon card and then one of our worker cards to pay for it. And then we can place this here, there, or over there. Now there are still a couple wagons over there in the market, so I think maybe let's be greedy and place onto this spot, which means we are now somewhat incentivized to place another wagon down over here, hopefully before the next scoring. Now this is also good because it means we could potentially play a village tile over here, but at the moment there aren't actually any village tiles in the market, but we're still trying to plan ahead. Now, obviously, that is not a completed region, so we don't get any points from there, but we do get to draw one yield card and to take the associated benefit. So we can draw the top card, and that is simple. We just get two red points. We were at seven, so now we go up to nine, and that has finished our turn. This means blue can go, and they have decided to spend three of their cards to place this in out. One is blue, and the other two are both for villages, so that is going to count for the other blue card. And the only spot they could place this is right over here. Now that is a single region done, so that will give them one green point. Which means they now have 15 total. And then that in is going to give them a wild hex, which they can put into their reserve. That's finished their turn, so yellow can go. And they have decided to play this quarry. Now they happen to have two of these quarry cards in their hand, which is obviously why they took this on their previous turn. And they are going to place this one over here. Now that does not complete this region, that is the second out of three quarries needed to complete that size 3 region, so they're hoping to get another one before the next scoring happens. Now the quarry is going to give them one marble, and they have decided to immediately use that in order to draw some more cards. In this case, they will draw three cards from the top of the deck. Alright, they are done, which means it's time for us to go, and I figure let's reserve a tile. Now, there are a couple of good agriculture tiles out here, but we don't have any agriculture cards in our hand anymore. We had so many earlier, but we spent them on other things. We do have one monastery card and one worker, though, so I think let's go ahead and take a monastery. We can place that over here, and then we have to refill the market. It looks like that is a village. That's finished our turn. And now the blue player can go, and they are simply going to draw two cards for their turn. After that, yellow is up, and they are going to reserve a tile. And the one they want is this village. That will go into the reserve, and then a new tile can be revealed. This one is a quarry, and that will go into the market. After that, it's time for us to go, and let's place this monastery. Now we can spend this card and this worker to do that. And we have um, a lot of options. We can place this onto all four of these yellow areas. Now, we could go over here if we are hoping to place over there before this scoring round happens, but I'm not super confident that's going to actually happen. So I think let's just place over here, which gives us another possibility of placing a village, although once again, there are no villages currently in the market. Now, that is a size 1 region, so we get 1 green point, which ties us with the blue player at 15. After that, the monastery lets us draw 3 cards, so we can take those from the top of the deck. We found a village card, we also have another monastery card, and a wagon card. So we are still pretty varied with the cards in our hand, although we do have a couple of pairs. This means our turn is done, and blue can go, and they are going to use their second reserve slot to take a tile, and they want this quarry. Now they have to draw a new tile to refill that spot, and it's another quarry, and now the yellow player can go. They're going to start by considering their cards. And then they have decided to play three cards from their hand to put this village out. They have one village card and two of a matching other type. And then this one is going to go right down here. Now that is a size one region completed, so they get one green point, which means they are up to 13 total. After that, the village is going to give them two workers, which they can take from the supply, and that has finished their turn. 
This means we are up, and I think we definitely want this quarry that showed up on the market. We can place that over here into our reserve for our action, and the next tile out is an agriculture tile. There are three of those tiles out there now, and there are a few different agriculture types showing. Blue can now take their turn, and they are going to start by playing three cards. Two of these are associated with the inns, and one is for the quarry, and they're going to use that to place this quarry down right over there. Now that did complete a single size region, so they will get one green point, and that brings them up to 16. And then they will get two marbles, so they will finally get a payoff for this upgrade they took a long time ago that they were certainly starting to regret. Either way, they have the two marble now, and they can only spend at most one marble per turn, and they are indeed going to spend one marble right now in order to play this tile out as a castle. Now they're going to put that right over here, and they can pay for it with the two castle cards that they happen to have in their hand, so that worked out really well for them. And then they are going to get one more green point because that completed a size one region. Now, after that, they do the castle effect, which lets them place a single tile from the market onto any connected legal spot in their territory. Now, I imagine they would have preferred there to be a quarry tile out here or perhaps a village, but they figure taking a monastery is also not bad because they currently don't have any cards in their hand, and placing the monastery right there lets them draw three more cards to start their hand back up again. Now, that did not complete a region. They need one more monastery there to complete that, but for now, they're feeling pretty good about that rather large turn. The final thing they have to do is draw a new tile, and that is a village, which will go right over here. At this point, it's the yellow player's turn, and they are going to snap up this village that just showed up, and they're going to place that into their reserve. After that, they have to reveal a tile from the stack, and this is another agriculture tile. And it's worth noting the yellow player just has two tiles left in this middle stack, so as soon as both of these are gone, that would potentially cause the second scoring. Of course, unless one of the rest of us empties their second stack before the yellow player does. Well, yellow is done, and we get to go, and it's worth noting that in the market there are four of these agriculture tiles, so if one more shows up without any of these going away, then that will be five, those will be cleared, and we'll get five more from the neutral stacks. Now I think for our turn, let's just play this quarry that's in our reserve. We can place that right over here, and that completed a size 2 region, so that gives us three green points. This means we go from 15 up to 18, which just barely puts us in the lead. After that, the quarry is going to give us a single marble, and then let's just spend this right away to reserve another tile. Now, there are a couple of tiles out here that are agriculture that have two different types on them, so those would certainly be nice to try and place before the next scoring. Unfortunately, we don't actually have any uh, agriculture cards in our hand. Now, technically, I am cheating. I just realized we didn't actually spend the cards for that placement, sorry. These are gone, and then with regards to the cards that we have left, we have a pair of city cards, but there are no city tiles out here. Now, we do have one monastery and one wagon, so part of me feels like maybe we should take one of those instead. And actually, we were hoping to place another wagon over here to complete another size 2 region before the next scoring, so I think let's reserve a wagon, and then potentially next turn, we could place that out by spending three cards, although it would be nice to spend these red cards on a city, but we haven't seen a city tile show up that we could take in some time. Now we can reveal another tile from the stack, and it's another quarry. Our turn is done, so blue can go, and they have decided to reserve this quarry that just showed up, they have a couple of reserve spots, and each of these gives them two marble, which is great. That's finished their action, so they have to refill the market with a new tile, and this is a wagon. And then they've decided to spend this marble for another action, and with this action, they are going to reserve a monastery. So that means both of their reserve spots are full. We have to draw another tile from the top of their stack, and that is the first in that we've seen in a while. At this point, blue is done, and yellow has decided to play this village out by spending both of their workers. Now, they are going to put this right over here, which completes a size 1 region to give them 1 green point, which will bring them up to 14, and then the action for that village is going to give them 2 workers back. That's finished their turn, which means it's time for us to go again, and we could play this wagon out by spending 3 cards, but spending two red cards for this feels really punishing considering we still have two city spots out in our territory. So I think for the moment we don't have to rush just yet. It doesn't look like the scoring is going to happen at the end of this round, so we should get another turn before that happens. With that in mind, let's try our luck at drawing some cards. Hopefully we'll find another wagon card. So we can draw three. The top one is for a village. The next one is for another city. And then we found one for agriculture. So we did not find another wagon, but having more of these cards is certainly a good thing, I think. Well, we are done, which means the blue player can go, and they have decided 
to play these two yellow cards in order to pay for this monastery. Now that's going to go over here, and that completed a size 2 region, so they can take 3 green points, which brings them from 17 up to 20. After that, the monastery will give them 3 cards, which they can add directly into their hand, and they are now done with their turn. This means yellow can go, and they want to reserve a tile. In this case, they like the idea of this inn, so they can put this into their reserve, and then they have to replace the tile in the market with, it looks like, another quarry. Now they have just one tile left on their board, and currently they are the closest to initiating the next scoring of the game. This means it's time for us to go, and I don't think we should wait any longer. Let's certainly get this wagon played out over here. Now that is going to cost us our one wagon, as well as a pair of other cards. We could spend a couple of village cards or a couple of the city cards, and considering there isn't a village or a city in the market, and we have yet another city card in our hand, I figure we'll get rid of these two red ones here. Now that has completed a size 2 region, so that gives us 3 green points. So we will go from 18 up to 21. Our turn is done, so blue can go, and even though they've already reserved one quarry, they want to reserve another one. They can tell that we are one quarry away from completing all of our quarries, which would give us 3 of these green points when we were able to make that happen, and they have 2 spots for quarries, so they figure they're going to go all in on this, even though I'm telling you right now, it's not like their hand is full of grey cards. They're hoping this is going to work out for them, and then of course a new tile does have to be placed, and this is yet another agriculture. And that is actually the fifth agriculture that's been added to the market. That means all five of these are going to go away out of the game, and then we have to reveal five more tiles from the top of these neutral stacks. So that is a castle, next up there is a village, that one is a quarry, after that there is an agriculture and another wagon. Well, blue's turn is done. And now yellow has decided to play this inn. They will spend one card along with one worker, and the inn will head right over there. That completed a size one region, so they get one green point, and then they get a wild blue hex from the supply. They can put that into the reserve. All right, that's finished their turn, which means it's time for us to go. And while it is tempting to take this quarry over here, that is also risky considering we don't have any quarry cards in our hand. Now we do draw three cards at a time when we take our turn to draw, so maybe we should go for that, or, I suppose, actually, no, I'm being silly, we should certainly take this village. The quarry seems nice, but we do have two of the village cards in our hand, and those will give us two workers, which we could use to pay for something, like another quarry that's still out there, potentially. So, let's place this over here for our turn's action, and then we have to refill the market. That is another quarry, and now we only have one tile left in our second stack. All right, it's the blue player's turn, and they are going to just draw two cards into their hand, and that was a very quick turn. So after that, the yellow player can go, and they have decided to play this tile. They have just one card in their hand and a worker, so it looks like they are playing a castle. So that worked out pretty nicely for them. It looks like they were actually building towards this through a couple of turns. Now this is going to go right over here, which completes a size 1 region, which means they go up to 16 green points total. Now, after that, we can see that that was their final castle spot, so that means they can achieve this as the second player to do it, so that gives them one green point, and then this is removed from the game. Next up, they can activate the castle, which lets them place any tile from the market directly down into their territory, and the thing they really wanted was a quarry, and there are actually a couple to choose from. So, they can take this one here, and place it onto that spot on their board. Now, that has completed a size 3 region, so that gives them 6 green points which brings them from 17 up to 23. Now, after that, they are going to get one marble, which they can put in front of them. And then they have to refill the market by drawing a tile from their stack, and this is a wagon. Now, at this moment, we can see that the first player to reveal the second scoring has happened, and we have to finish the round before that scoring happens, but just like the last time, this is going to be the end of the round after the yellow player's turn. Now, technically, before that happens, they could spend this marble right now for another action, and they figure they may as well. Now, with this action, they are simply going to draw three cards from the top of the deck. All right, their turn is done, and we have finished the round in which the second scoring has been triggered, so it's time for us to score. First off, we have the blue player. They have 20 green points, and they will add that to the 13 red points that they had to bring them up to 33 points. After that, we are going to get 21 points that is added to the 9 red points that we had, so that brings us up to 30, and then the yellow player was at 7 red points, and they add to that 23 points, so that means they are also at 30 red points, and both of us have gained on the blue player. 
All right, it's now our turn, and there's only going to be one more scoring in the game. Now, we have a pretty obvious play here, I think. Let's spend these two village cards to play the village out, and we can put it right over here. Now, that is a single size region, so we get one green point, and that'll bring us up to 22. Next up, the village will activate and give us two workers that we can spend in the future. All right, that has finished our turn, which means blue can go, and they have decided to play three cards, Two are for the Monastery, which can turn into a Quarry card, and then another Quarry card. So they can use this to place this right over here. That does not complete a region, and it does give them two Marble, so they can take that immediately. And after that, they are going to spend one of their Marble in order to draw a couple of cards. Blue is done, so now Yellow can go, and they are simply going to draw three cards from the top of the deck, and that finished a quick turn for them. After that, we are up. And let's go ahead and reserve this quarry. We can play it out next turn if we want to with both of these workers, and that would be our last quarry, which should give us some green points for completing all of those spots. Now we have to replace this with a new tile, and it is a city. Our turn is done, so blue can go, and they want to start by reserving this castle. Now they do have to refill the market, so that is a monastery, and then they are going to spend this marble in order to play this castle out. They do indeed have two castle cards in their hand, so they can place that right over here. That has completed a size 1 region, so they will get one green point, and then they can do the castle action to place any tile from the market down onto their board. In this case, they are going to select this city tile. They can place that right over there, which also completes a size 1 region to give them a single green point. And then they can take an unlock. Now they are tempted to take one for the villages considering they haven't actually placed any villages yet, but there are no villages over here in the market and they can't guarantee how many of those will actually show up. So instead, they're going to take the extra card draw upgrade. At this point, they have to refill the market once again and that is another city tile. And they are now done with their turn. All right, it's the yellow player's turn and they want to reserve a tile. They would love to take this city, but unfortunately their last city spot on their territory is not adjacent to anything that they played on already, so instead they are going to go for a monastery. That will go here, and then they can replace that spot in the market with an agriculture tile. Alright, it's time for us to go, and I think let's spend both of our workers to place this quarry out. Now this is going to be the last quarry spot in our territory, and we're the first player to do that. The blue player hypothetically could have done that on their last turn, but perhaps they didn't have the right cards in their hand to actually play it out. Now that is a size 1 territory, so the first thing that we do is get 1 green point, which will bring us up to 23. And then since we completed all of the quarry regions in our territory, we get 3 more green points, and that will bring us up to 26. After that, our quarry will give us a marble, and I think we should spend it immediately in order to reserve this city. We still have two of those city spots in our area, and we do have one city card in our hand. Now we have to refresh this spot over here, and the next one is another monastery. Alright, it's time for the blue player to go, and they are just going to draw three cards from the top of the deck. After this, the yellow player can take their turn, and they are going to play this monastery. For this, they are going to spend three cards. One is for the monastery, and two are for the villages. Now, this is a painful decision for yellow, because they have just one more village spot left, and these would be the cards that would pay for it that would give them workers, but they have not seen a village show up in the market, and they don't want to wait around hoping for one to show up. Instead, they're going to use the cards that they have right now to place this out. That can go right over here, and then that did not complete a region, but it does give them three more cards that they can add into their hand. All right, they are done, which means it's time for us to go, and we cannot actually play this out just yet, so I think for our turn we are going to be drawing cards. The first one is for Agriculture, the second is also for Agriculture, and the third is for Monastery. So we unfortunately did not hit any City cards, but we do have the doubles that we would need to place out that City next turn if we want to. All right, our turn is done, which means Blue can go, and they want to place this quarry out right over here. Now they are going to do that by spending three cards, they have a quarry, and then they'll spend two wagons, and that did complete a size 2 region, which will give them three green points. This brings them from 22 up to 25, and then they have also covered up all of the quarry spots in their territory, so that means they are going to get one green point for being the second player to do that, so that brings them up to 26. Now after that, the quarry is going to give them two marble, and then they are going to spend one of them right now to take another action. 
With this, they are simply going to draw three cards from the top of the deck. All right, the yellow player can take their turn, and they are going to reserve a wagon from the market. So they'll take this one here and then replace it with a top tile from their stack, and that is a village. All right, it's our turn, and let's go ahead and play this tile. Now we have to spend a red card and then a pair. I'd love to have a pair of the inns, considering we have no more inns in our area, but we do have to make a decision between these. Now, considering we have three of the agriculture versus the two for the monastery, I figure we can spend the two agriculture, and then we can place this down right over there. Now, that completed a size one region, so we get one green point, which means we are at 27, and then we can take an upgrade. Now, I think what we should do is expand our reserve. That immediately gets us two green points, which is, of course, a lot better if you get it earlier on in the game, but also having the flexibility to be working towards two of the tiles at the same time does seem like a good thing as we're approaching the end game. So we can now take two green points immediately, which will bring us all the way up to 29. Well, our turn is done, so blue can go. And they have decided to reserve a monastery. After that, they are going to spend this marble and then also spend three cards from their hand in order to place this monastery out. Now that is two villages to pay for the other monastery card, and this can go right over here. That is a size one region completed, so they get one green point, which brings them up to 27, and then that also covered up their final monastery spot. This means they will get three more green points immediately, so that gets them to 30, and then this will flip over. Next up, the Monastery Benefit will activate, which will give them three more cards that they can put into their hand. All right, it's now time for Yellow to go, and they have decided to play three cards in order to put this wagon out. Now, the two city cards will match up for the other wagon card they needed, and this will go over here. That did complete a size one region, so they get one green point, which brings them to 24, and that also covered up their final wagon spot, so that means they were the first player to do that, which means they get three more green points. Next up, they can take the benefit of the wagon, which will give them two yield cards. Well, let's see what they find. The first is going to give them a worker, and the second yield card will give them a wild hexagon. So that was a pretty good couple of draws for them. Getting points is certainly good as well, but these will leave them pretty flexible. So they can take these rewards, and I actually just realized that the blue player forgot to fill in the market on their turn. So technically, there should be this agriculture tile here. And at this point, the yellow player is done with their turn. This means it's time for us to go. And I think let's reserve this village tile. That would be our final village, which is great. Although we don't currently have any village cards in our hand. However, we have two reserve spots now. So we can put this here and then work towards something else. Perhaps we will be able to take this other monastery on our next turn to then play it out with the two yellow cards we have. And then that monastery would let us draw more cards, which could potentially give us the orange cards that we need. I think that's a pretty good plan overall anyway. Uh, we can now refill the supply, and that is a wagon. Well, the blue player can now go, and they have decided to take one of these agriculture tiles and put it into their reserve. After that, they can refresh, and this is a quarry. After that, it's the yellow player's turn, and I just realized that technically this should be right over there on their single reserve spot. Now they can try to figure out what they want to do, and it appears they actually want to spend this red card with a worker in order to place this wild token out as a city. So that will go over here. They can spend both of these, and then that was a single size region completed, so they get one green point, which brings them to 28, and then they have covered all of their red spots in their territory, and they're the first one to do that, so they get two more green points from this bonus. That will then flip over, and then they can take their final upgrade of the game. Now, realistically, they are going back and forth between whether or not they want to draw even more in the final few turns. Drawing an extra card does seem like a pretty good way to get the things that they need. But of course, placing this out will increase their flexibility and also give them two green points immediately. And they've decided those green points are enough. They're going to go for the extra reserve. So they will take two more green points, which brings them up to 32 total. Well, yellow is done, so now we can go, and like I talked about on our last turn, I think a good path for us is to reserve this monastery, which we can pay for on our next turn, and that will give us some cards, which will hopefully let us play out this village soon. After reserving that, we have to refill the market, and that is yet another monastery, and our turn is done. This means blue can go, and they have decided to play three cards out so that they can put this agriculture tile down. They are going to pay for it with two of the monastery and one agriculture card, and they are going to place this down right over there. 
Now that has completed a size one region and that added one new agriculture type to that region. So that will give them another point. So that means all told, they will get two green points for putting that down. This will tie them with yellow at 32. Blue's turn is done, so now yellow can go. And if they have decided, they're just going to draw three cards from the top of the deck. That's finished their turn, so now we can go. And let's go ahead and play our monastery. So we can spend the two yellow cards, and then we will place this one right over here, I think. There is another monastery out on the market, and perhaps we can get that and put it over here. I think it's going to be worth it to try and aim for those three points instead of the one guaranteed point by placing on that spot. Now, after we place over here, we are going to get a reward of taking three cards from the top of the deck. As you can see, there's not that many cards left in the deck. That is a monastery card, a village card, and then an in card. Well, that's finished up our turn, which means blue can go, and they are simply going to draw three cards from the top of the deck. After that, it's the yellow player's turn, and they have decided to reserve a tile. In this case, they want this monastery tile, so that will be removed. And then they can replace it with a tile from their stack. This is a village. Well, it's time for us to go, and I think let's play this village tile. We can spend one orange card and two blue cards for it. These two blue cards are not worth anything else for us besides being a two-for-one, considering we placed all of our blue quite a while ago. Now, we can only place this in one spot because that's the last village location in our territory. That was a single size region, so we can get one green point, which will bring us to 30. And then since we are the first player to play all of the orange village tiles, we get three more green points. After that, we can activate the village, which is going to give us two workers, and that is going to finish up our turn. Well, it's now time for the blue player to go. And after considering their options, they are going to reserve this agriculture tile. They have to replace that spot in the market, and this is another village. And that's finished their turn. This means yellow can go. And they've decided they are going to reserve another tile. In this case, they want a village. And then they can replace that in the market with this tile, which is an agriculture. All right, their turn is done, which means we get to go. And we have a couple of workers, which is great, and no tiles in front of us. Now, the game is getting close to the end at this point. As you can see, we don't need a quarry or the village because those are all full. We have a bunch of spots that could take this agriculture, and we do have two more spots where we could put the wagons down. Now, the agriculture is going to be guaranteed points, whereas the wagons will have us drawing these yield cards, which could be points, or they could also be other things like marble, which would give us another turn, or more workers, which is certainly a nice thing to have. Now we do have one agriculture card in our hand, so I think what we should probably do is shift over and try to get a couple of agriculture so we can fill this size 2 region to get more points for it, and we would just need one more thing, either a matching pair or another agriculture card, to make the second one happen. Now I'm getting a little ahead of myself. For this turn, I think let's just reserve one of these two. We can place that over here and then replace it with a new tile, and that is another quarry. Our turn is done, so blue can go. And they have decided to reserve another tile, and that's going to be this village. This will actually be their first village that they play this game if they end up putting it down into their territory. All right, they have to refill the market, so the next one is a castle. And now it's time for the yellow player to go again. In this case, they want to build this village, and they can do so with two of the orange cards. So they can put that right over there. That's a size of one region they just finished, so that gives them one green point which ties them with us at 33, but then they are the second player to place all of the orange villages out, so they'll get another point for this, and that puts them into the lead at 34 green points. After that, they can take the village action for the final time, and this will give them two workers. All right, it's our turn, and I think let's just reserve the other agriculture tile that we need to complete this size two area. I would hate for somebody else to grab this to get a couple points and then not have another shot to get another one before the game is over. And we do have to refill this, and we have filled it with another of the exact same type of agriculture. And speaking of the game ending, we have just two tiles left in our third stack. Now remember, as soon as any one player clears their third stack, we finish the round and then play one more. So we still have a couple of rounds left over, and we have one less tile on here, so we are slightly more in control than they are, but not by much. Well, that finished our turn, so blue can go. And they have decided to play a tile. In this case, they are going to play two orange cards to pay for this village. That's their first village of the game, and at this point, they are not going to try and make a size 3 region happen. They're just going to put this over here so that they can complete a size 1 region and get one green point. That's going to tie them with us at 33, and then they gain one worker from the supply. 
All right, that finishes their turn, so yellow can go. And they're going to start by considering their cards. After thinking it through, they're going to spend a yellow card as well as one worker to place this monastery out. And that will go over here, which completes a size one area to give them a green point. That pushes them up to 35. And then they can take the monastery benefit of drawing three cards from the top of the deck. Yellow is done, so now we can go, and I figure let's just play one of our agriculture tiles. We can put this right over here and do that by spending this card and this worker. And then we do not score the region because it's not done, but that is the first of the orchard type of agriculture to be placed there, so we do get one green point for that action. This brings us up to 34. Our turn is done, so blue can go. And they have decided to spend these two red city cards as if they were light green for agriculture. And they'll also spend this worker to pay for the other card they need. And they can place this onto that spot over there. Now that finished a size one region. And that is the first of that agriculture type into that region. So that means they are going to get two green points. And that is also the final agriculture region in their territory. Two points will bring them to 35, and if you look down here, the agriculture bonus is the largest of any of them. Now that gives them four green points for filling in all of those spots, and then this will flip over. So that brings them from 35 all the way up to 39, and considering they have a lead on the red track, and now a pretty decent lead on the green track, the blue player is in a pretty good position in this game, although it is not over yet. So blue is done, which means the yellow player can go, and they are going to reserve a tile. In this case, they're going to go for this agriculture, and then they have to refill the market with another one, and that is going to be a city. So their turn is done, which means we can go, and I think we probably want to take this city. Uh, we could put that over there, and that would be our last city, so that would get us one extra point, which is certainly good, although we don't currently have any cities in front of us. So part of me feels like grabbing this is good, but I can also tell that the blue player is not in a position to place a city down, and the yellow player has placed all of their cities. So actually, maybe let's just hold off on that. The bonus that will unlock for us is not going to have that much of an effect, considering the game is almost over. And I think let's just draw some cards and see what options those show us for the next turns. Well, there are currently three cards on top of the deck, and we draw three. So that is going to be a monastery, a agriculture, and a castle. And at this point, we need to shuffle up the discard pile to make a new draw deck. All right, our turn is done. So blue can go, and they want to reserve a tile. They're going to take one of these wagons, and then they will refill the supply with a village. That's finished their turn, which means yellow can go. And they've decided they are going to play this agriculture tile. Now they could put it over here to try and complete a size 2 area before the game is over, or go into one of the single spots. And this is a tough decision for them. Currently, there aren't any agriculture tiles in the market, so they can't be sure if more will show up, and they are not going to push their luck. They're just going to place this over here to complete one region. That will give them a point, and then a new agriculture here gives them another point. So that is two green points total. That will bring them up to 37 and finish their turn. Okay, we can take our turn, and I think let's place this right over there. That's going to cost our worker as well as this agriculture card. And then that is a new type of agriculture over here, which gives us a point. And we completed a size 2 for 3 more points, so that's 4 points total. We were at 34, and now we go up to 38, so we are once again right in the thick of it with our opponents. Well, it's now time for Blue to take their turn. And they are just going to draw 3 cards from the top of the deck. So, the yellow player can go, and they want to reserve a tile. And they are going to take a quarry. They can place that into the reserve and then refill the market with another village tile. Their turn is up, so now we can go, and we could reserve this city, but there's still really no pressure on that. And we could also take a wagon, but there are three of those out here. So I think instead, let's just draw three cards into our hand. Well, with that, we could certainly place the city out, so we will hopefully reserve that on our next turn. At this point, the blue player can go, and they have decided to reserve a tile, and they're going to take one of these villages. Now they have to replace that with another tile, which is going to be a wagon. And that's finished their turn. So yellow can go. And they're going to start by looking at their cards. So they've decided they are going to build this quarry. They have two castle cards and a uh, worker here, so that will pay for it. They can place this onto this spot, which is going to be a single completed zone for one point. And that is the final quarry spot filled on their board. But both of their opponents have already put all of their quarries out, so there is no bonus points for that for the yellow player coming in third. Either way, they do get one green point, which means they are tied with us. 
They also get to take one marble from the supply, and then they have decided they'll just wait on that for the moment and see what happens before their next turn. Well, we can now go, and I think let's reserve this city, because we can obviously pay for it with the cards that we have in our hand. And we have to refill this spot, and we have just one tile left on our stack. In fact, all three of the players have just one tile there, so all of us are very close to ending the game. Now, this is going to be another castle, and at the moment, everyone has played their castles. So the castle tiles, as well as this uh, quarry up here, are not good for anyone, because all of those spots are filled up on every territory in the game. That's finished our turn, so blue can go. And they have decided to play a tile. In this case, they can easily pay for this village, and they're going to put that right over there to complete a single size zone to get one green point. That's going to push them up to 40, and then they will get one worker from the supply for that village. All right, their turn is done. So it's the yellow player's turn, and they are in a funny position where they want to reserve a tile to play, but none of the tiles in the market are inns, agriculture, or monastery, and those are the only three types that yellow can play at this point. Now, they could spend their turns drawing cards and hoping that some of their opponents will refresh those tiles into something that they want, but they've decided instead they are going to push the game towards the end because they figure they don't have any great ways to make points in the market, so they may as well assume that their opponents might have better ways to make points, so it's likely the sooner the game ends for yellow, the better. So they're going to spend their turn reserving a tile that they can't even legally place, and they figure they may as well take this village. So they can put this into the reserve, and even though they can't play it ever in this game, they remember that every tile, as well as marble, worker, or the hex tiles, are all worth one point once the game is over, so that is effectively them spending an action to take a point, which isn't great, but it's still the best option they thought for themselves. Now they do have to refill the market, which means they're going to put this monastery out there, and at this moment we can see that yellow has, for the third time in the game, caused a scoring to be triggered. Once again, for the third scoring, we finish the round and then take one more turn each, so that means the round is actually over at this point once Yellow is done with her turn, and each player will get one more turn. Now, in this case, Yellow does have a marble which they could spend right now if they wanted to, and part of them does want to reserve this monastery because they could play that over there if they had the cards for it, but obviously they will have just one more action left in the game, and they do not have anywhere near enough cards in their hand to play this out, so they don't think that makes sense. Instead, they are just going to hold on to this for the moment. Well, the third scoring has officially been triggered, and we finished the round from that, so now we do just one more round, and then the game is over. That means this is our last turn of the game, and we have a pretty good turn to do here. Let's go ahead and place this out into our territory. We can put that right over there and spend these two red cards, and that completed a size 1 region, so that gets us one green point. This means we will go up to 39, and then we can take one of these upgrades, and this is important because we are allowed to grab this, which is worth two more green points, and that could be a big deal considering how close the scores currently are. So we can place that right over there and take those two green points. This will put us just barely in the lead at 41. Our final turn is done, so now the blue player can go. And they are also going to play a tile. That is going to be this wagon, which they'll spend a card and a worker for. Now they're going to put this right over here, which completes a size 1 region to give them one green point. Which means they are tied with us. After that, they can take one yield card from the top of the deck, and that one is going to give them one green point. Alright! They certainly seem happy about that as they go up to 42, and that has finished the blue player's final turn. This means it's time for Yellow to take their last turn of the game, and unfortunately, they don't have any great options. They can't play this tile out, so realistically, the best thing that they can do is spend their turn getting one victory point worth of stuff, and they figure they draw three cards for an action, and every three cards is a point, so they'll spend their turn drawing those three cards, and they could spend this marble to take another action, but the marble itself is worth a point, so they figure they'll just hold on to it. So, the last turn of the game is officially over, and now it's time to perform the third scoring. We can start with blue. They have 42 green points, and they are going to add that to their 33. So that means they go to 35, and then up to 75, which brings them all the way here. Now they can put their 50-point marker into the center to remember that they crossed over the 50 mark. Next up, we can score 41 points. We were at 30, so that is going to bring us up to 71 points total, and we can put our 50-point marker out. And now yellow can score. They were at 30, and they have 38 green points, which means they are going to go up to 68 red points. Now that has finished the final scoring, so now it's time for us to calculate our endgame points. 
Currently, we don't have any tokens in front of us, and we have four cards. So every three of these is worth a point, so we will get one more point. The blue player has no tokens and three cards, so they will also get one more point. And then finally, the yellow player has three cards for a point, a marble for a point, and a tile for a point, so they will get three endgame points total. So, it looks like blue is the winner, we are barely in second place, and yellow comes in third, and that completes one full three-player game of the Castles of Tuscany. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgamescom support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching!